A question we get asked a lot in clinical practice is, should I be taking painkillers for my back pain? Now, obviously I can't give you direct advice about that on this course, but I can tell you the general guidelines we give people who come and see us. Firstly, if you're unsure, always go and speak to your doctor or your pharmacist before taking anything. Because even though you can buy some things over the counter, that doesn't necessarily mean they're safe or that they'll be effective for you. So if you're unsure, always go and speak to your doctor or pharmacist first. Secondly, I want you to understand the difference between pain and suffering. Pain is a sensation we feel in the body and we all feel pain from time to time. But suffering is how it affects you emotionally and how it affects your quality of life. It's important to understand as well that most of the time, almost always in fact, pain doesn't mean there's any harm going on. In fact, pain can be a helpful reminder of what your body does and doesn't like at the time, like sitting for too long or bending or lifting, for example. But the problem is when pain starts to really affect you emotionally or affect your quality of life, because suffering just leads to stress and stress can slow down your recovery even more, which we'll talk about later. So if you are suffering, then you may want to take painkillers to help. A key question to ask yourself is, will taking painkillers help me to stay active and or get enough sleep? Because both of those things help your body to recover. It's really important to stay active and do something every day. Even just going for a walk can have tremendous benefit on your back. And obviously, sleeping properly really helps your body to heal. So if taking painkillers helps you to stay active and moving around and helps you to sleep properly at night, then that could be a good reason to take them. If you're going to use pain medication for your back pain, then I want you to understand how to do it properly and safely. And we're going to use a stepwise approach. Now, this model is the way that most doctors will also prescribe medication. It means starting with the weaker stuff and then working up to stronger medication, but doing it in the correct way. So starting from the left, you start with paracetamol, which you can buy over the counter, otherwise known as acetaminophen and you can take up to eight of these a day, but never take more than that. If paracetamol isn't working though, you could also take ibuprofen, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug known as an NSAID, and you can take ibuprofen on its own or combined with paracetamol. The most important thing though, to remember with ibuprofen or any other NSAID is never take it on an empty stomach. You always make sure that you eat before taking NSAIDs. Now, if that isn't working, you'll go back to the doctor who'll probably prescribe something a bit stronger, which is usually a codeine based medication. And you can take this alongside paracetamol and ibuprofen. Sometimes they might prescribe cocodamol, which is actually codeine mixed with paracetamol. And you can take that with ibuprofen, but don't obviously take cocodamol with paracetamol. The next step up from that is morphine. So now we're in the opiates. And this is only really prescribed for very severe pain. So it's quite rarely prescribed. Now, this wouldn't be a responsible course if I didn't talk to you about the risks of taking medication. And we're going to look at the two most commonly taken medication for back pain, which are paracetamol and ibuprofen. The risk with taking paracetamol is in taking too much, often by accident, which can lead to liver failure, which can actually cause death. 10 grams or more is known to be a lethal dose, but you should never take more than eight tablets a day, which is four grams, but you don't want to go anywhere near the lethal dose. So never take more than eight tablets a day. Accidental overdose is really quite common. The reason for that is people often take paracetamol at the same time as taking another medication or medications that also contain paracetamol. For example, cough mixtures, Lemsips, and things like that. So if you're taking any other medication as well as paracetamol, have a look at the label and make sure you don't ever take two medications that both contain paracetamol. Seriously, young, fit, healthy people have died in this way because they didn't realize over a period of a few days how much paracetamol they were actually taking. The risks associated with NSAIDs, which are ibuprofen, but also aspirin, naproxen and diclofenac, the most common one is stomach bleeds. Now in the UK every year, three and a half thousand people end up in hospital from taking drugs like ibuprofen and having stomach bleeds and 400 people a year die. Most of those are over 60 years old, but the risks apply to every age group. 
Heart failure and stroke is also associated with NSAIDs. So if you have any feelings of being unwell while you're taking these medications, go to your doctor and make sure you're taking them correctly and make sure they're appropriate for you. The risks with NSAIDs also increase the older you are and the longer you take them. But unfortunately, a lot of people take ibuprofen and medication like that for a long time when they really shouldn't be. So again, this is a good opportunity to go to your doctor and see if it's appropriate for you to be taking these medications, especially in the long run.